What's up guys, it's Seth. I'm back with another PC build. I know it's been a while, it's now November, and the last build I put up was the extreme, like, $7,000 build or whatever, which was back at the end of September, if I'm not mistaken. But anyways, I'm back now, hoping to get up maybe a video for a different build once or twice a week. It's hard because of school to actually get these videos up, but as far as builds go, once or twice a week, and I've been getting in a lot of products on behalf of TG Buzz. Um, which is the website I run to review and actually I'll probably do a setup video a new one um, sometime soon because I have a new headset a new keyboard a new mouse new mouse pad mouse pads don't really matter but all sorts of new stuff for gaming and whatnot which is awesome but anyways as I get products in that I can review I'll be doing those as well unfortunately I don't have a great camcorder so reviewing the quality and stuff other than my iPhone there's not really a great thing to record with as you saw in my other videos where I was showing you my build, that camcorder is an HD, so that kind of stinks, but you know, it is what it is. Anyways, enough of the update stuff. Here's the build, and it's actually an AMD build. I always like to do the first build of the month is an under $1,000 build, probably the most popular because a lot of new PC builders are going to be in that price range. Um, and if you don't like Intel, then AMD is the way to go. Sorry for the pictures, they're a little blurry, but anyways. For the processor, it's going to be an AMD Phenom 2 X4 975, so it's a quad-core processor. Uh, the cores and the processing speed don't necessarily matter. It's more like the real-world performance that matters. And as far as all the AMD lower-level um, CPUs, I think the Phenom series is probably the best compared to the FX or the, um, the A series. From AMD, I think the Phenoms are probably the best if you're looking for straight up just gaming that you want to do. And as far as for cooling that, not going to do a liquid cooler on this one, even though I could have. Uh, it would have fit into the price range, and you can upgrade to that if you want to, which would be probably an H80 or H100 CPU cooler, which would be liquid. Um, nice thing about that is there's nothing you need to set up. But anyways, we're going to be doing an Arctic cooling CPU cooler. All the things are going to be in the PC part picker list, which there's going to link to in the description. So if you want to actually buy the stuff, it'll give you the um, exact model number with the best place to buy it for the cheapest price. And so yeah, this is just a regular CPU cooler, but it is a very good one for um, this type and not doing a liquid one. This is probably one of the best ones you can get. Went pretty high end on the motherboard because motherboard is something you don't want to necessarily skimp out on only because a motherboard will really inhibit your performance if it's a low level one like sub 100 we went a bit above 100 with a one sun <laughs> can't even talk a 178 dollar motherboard um from asus asus is probably one of the best motherboard manufacturers actually all pc parts are probably you know really good from asus but as far as motherboards with their Sabertooth series as well as their their um republic of gamer series it's just really, really good. This is the slightly lower end Sabertooth, but it's still great performance. 8 gigs of DDR3 1600 RAM. You always want to go with 1600 RAM. Um, it's a good speed for gaming and just regular use. You can go faster they have, you know, in the 2000s, but you don't really need it on a build like this. And hey, it only costs 40 bucks, and it's not a bad brand either, so. As far as main storage, this will work as, it's a pretty good excuse me a pretty good and fast hard drive because there is no ssd to be running games off of or larger programs but a 7200 rpm hard drive like the seagate barracuda series is going to be more than enough on a low end build like you would want for a under one thousand dollar pc build um and it's two terabytes so you shouldn't have any issue and I'll, of course you can always pick up like a hundred dollar um external hard drive which has like three or four terabytes um they don't cost a whole lot if you want that for storage but two terabytes should do fine um again asus this is for the video card um it's the 6870 this is going back a generation in the amd um video cards but it is great performing i can tell you right now that the 6870 is not from asus it's from honestly i don't remember Oh, excuse me, it's from S XFX, um, that's a good card, and that's what I'm running on my build right now. Perfect for gaming, I can tell you StarCraft 2, not the most intensive video card game, 
but I can play on max settings, no problem. Um, other games like League of Legends, these are the type of games that I play, and they just play perfect. So, um, no worry with that. You can definitely play on higher end settings on games like uh, Call of Duty or Gears of War, whatever you you really are into. This will work fine for an under one thousand dollar build. One six hundred and fifty watts of power, even though this really is only a four hundred watt um, build. But if you do overclocking on the AMD. Uh, Phenom processor you would want to have a higher wattage just to you know play it safe this is from Corsair with their carbide series easily one of the higher end um, series of power supply units that you can get and it's 80 plus bronze meaning that it is just gonna give you a little bit of that energy efficiency that you would want from a power supply even though um, that's kind of better once you get to like a thousand watts or you know upwards because you don't want to be draining your power um, and running up your electric bill but having those types of um, standards with the 80 plus uh, is good. Uh, I don't know what, it does say 80 plus gold on the picture, although in the description it said 80 plus bronze. I don't wanna say gold only because it might not be, but who knows, maybe it is. Uh, either way, it does have that um, like certification or whatever you wanna call it, which is, uh, which is always good. And just to finish it off, a really simple, you can go for Blu-ray, it'll fit into the $1,000 price range. I don't personally care for it. I don't do much with Blu-ray at all. Um, there's a few DVD, uh, DVDs I own that are Blu-ray. Other than that, I really don't care to be using them. So this is just a regular optical drive. Good reviews, only 16 bucks, so you can't really go wrong. Total cost, $943.59. There's probably like $15 or $20 in rebates that you can get. I'm um, bringing this down even further. So if you would like to go to maybe a slightly above $200 video card or transition from a regular optical drive to a Blu-ray drive, I think that's your best option if you would like to fully max out your $1,000 budget range. But this is going to be well under that, so you don't have to worry about shipping or anything like that. Um, it'll definitely be within your price range. So hope you guys enjoyed this build. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And when you comment, uh, don't just comment about this. Give me suggestions because as a video maker, I guess that's why I can call myself, uh, I do like getting suggestions from you guys as to what you want me to do a video about because um, then I know when I'm putting something out, you actually, you know, you care about it. So make sure to comment and tell me what you think about this one as well as what you would like to see in the next video. Um, subscribe as always. It's always great. And keep on liking the stuff. Hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.